Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a virtual one hour, one painting. Um, I'm joined by our regular presenter, Peter Clothier, and um, I welcome all of you. Thank you for being with us. And thank you to you, Peter. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, let's be aware that this is going to be something of an experiment because uh, normally we have our one hour, one painting live with a, with a little audience and uh, the painting in front of us. And uh, this time we're going to have um, me talking um, and you listening and seeing an image of the painting, which is a very different experience, but we're going to try it anyway. Um, let me start out by telling you a little, because I suspect there may be people watching this who have not done a one hour one painting before, just a little of the history. Peter. One hour one painting, uh, I imagined this uh, about 25 years ago, in fact, I've done any number of them since at museums and galleries and private homes ever since then. Uh, it, it started because uh, I was at that time uh, an art critic, quote unquote, and I was writing for national magazines and going to art exhibits and going home and writing uh, uh, reviews of these uh, wonderful shows. And I began to notice that I wasn't looking very well. I was wandering into galleries doing as we often do in, in museums and galleries. I wander around and look at the labels and, and spend in fact probably more time with the label by the painting than with the painting itself. I noticed myself doing this and felt kind of uncomfortable about it. And at the same time, I, I was introduced to meditation. And um, I had always been very resistant to the idea when I first heard about it many, many years ago. And I thought, this is not for me. My head is too busy. I, I will never be interested in that. And besides which, what is this Eastern religion stuff? And uh, so I had resisted for a long time, but it came to a point in my life where I really did get interested in it and uh, found it a, a, a useful resource for uh, some turmoil I was going through in my life. And um, so I started to meditate and I found myself meditating with some guidance for five minutes here, 10 minutes there. And I thought that was pretty, pretty good. And then I found that there was a sitting group down in Laguna Beach where I live part time. And so I called to find out about it. And the nice woman who answered the phone when I inquired about it said, oh, yes, well, we start out by sitting for an hour. And I thought, my God, who could ever sit for an hour and do nothing? This is crazy. But anyway, as, as usual, when I resist something, I think that's exactly the thing that I have to go ahead and do. So I signed up and went to the first session and um, uh, we, we sat and, and, and we sat for an hour. And I didn't die of boredom. I didn't expire before the end of the session. In fact, at the end of the session, I felt kind of pleased with myself. And so I put these two things together. One hour, one painting, why not? Would it be a good way to look at art? So I started this experiment. I started, in fact, at uh, Los Angeles County Museum with a big painting by um, Willem de Kooning, Mount Montauk Highway. And uh, it went well. I found that other people enjoyed the experience as much as I did. So I've been doing them ever since. And, and uh, uh, one hour one painting, it's, it's a, a blend of two very old, very venerable skills. One is contemplation, the other is meditation. Contemplation is done obviously with eyes open. Meditation is done with eyes closed. So it's a mixture of inner work, settling down, watching the mind, being attentive, and outer work which is actually the work of looking at the painting. So it's a blend of those two things and I will try to teach you a little about both. And uh, once we're ready to get going, Marinta, um, I'll be up for it. Thank you, Peter, for that great introduction. We're ready to go. Good. Okay, well, first, let me ask everyone to get into a comfortable position. Very important to be comfortable. 
Now, uh, if you're in a chair, uh, make sure it's a comfortable chair, uh, that uh, uh, it's not somewhere that you feel um, like slouching because slouching is, it de detracts from the attention. But you do need to be at, uh, uh, comfortable, especially when you're gonna be sitting for quite some time without moving very much. And uh, so that is the first thing to be comfortable with your position. Next thing you need to be, uh, you, you need to be comfortable with is the breath. Because the breath is going to be our anchor throughout both the meditation and the contemplation. And we'll start out with closed eyes and a good straight back. And bringing the attention to the breath. Some people feel a little self-conscious first uh, if they are you know, sitting with closed eyes. Try to get comfortable with that. So with a good straight back, watching the breath, you'll probably notice that the mind has a tendency to wander off. It gets distracted. Gets distracted by physical sensations, discomfort, sounds, we are in a home as I speak. You may have to hear the sound of a, a telephone or a barking dog. Or it may be just be thoughts. What am I going to have for dinner tonight? How did that meeting go this morning? All kinds of thoughts that invade our minds. And the simple strategy to deal with any distraction that comes along is just to notice that it's there and bring the attention back gently to the breath. So let's practice that for a few moments. Breathing in, breathing out. becoming as comfortable with the breath as possible. You can think of the whole body as breathing. The breath entering through every cell watching the expansion and contraction of the body. The goal is to rest in attention. So not only is the body fully relaxed, the mind is fully attentive. Attentive to the breath.
we rest in attention to the breath in meditation. We rest in attention to the image when we contemplate. So when you're ready, open your eyes and rest in attention to the image on the screen in front of you. Begin by taking in the entire image. To do that, it's useful to start at one corner and follow the frame of the painting with your eyes. Whichever direction you choose to take, just slowly, slowly, slowly follow that frame where the painting meets the wall. Keep following that line of the edge of the painting. And when you've completed that circuit, allow the attention to rest on some object of your choice, some color of your choice, somewhere in the painting. Whatever attracts your eye. and rest in attention to that particular area of the painting. Remembering to breathe because that's our anchor, the breath. So we're resting in attention to that one area of the painting and breathing in, breathing out. If the focus of your attention wanders, just bring it back, sharpen it. And zoom back out to take in the whole painting in its entirety, the entire surface of the painting in one gaze. Breathing in and breathing out. It's almost as if the painting breathes with you. And if you can imagine yourself taking a snapshot of the entire surface of the painting, and close your eyes.
with eyes closed. Bring our attention back to the breath. If you can, in the mind's eye, reconstruct first the image of that area of concentration. and then the entire painting. Eyes still closed. So you have what you remember of the painting before you in your mind's eye. And bring your attention back to the body. Think of the whole body as breathing. Relaxing with the out breath and breathing in new energy with the in breath. Meditation it is not about blissing out, it's about waking up. So think of yourself as waking up each time you inhale. And when you're ready, open your eyes and bring your attention back to the painting. Let's bring our attention next to the lines in the painting. Let's start out with the strong lines, the horizon lines. but move horizontally across the painting. Just notice the big yellow area of the sky and the line that divides that from the black of the ocean. Follow that line, even where it disappears to show other things, from edge to edge.
paying special attention. And the line below it, the line that separates the black of the ocean from the orange of the beach, same process. And the curving line that separates the shaded area of the beach from the sunlit area. Same process. Not forgetting to breathe. Focusing the attention with the breath. Sharpening the attention. And now zoom out. And think of those background areas as an abstract painting in themselves. A painting of yellow area, black area, orange area, and deeper orange area. Just look at those areas as though at an abstract painting. And take it in, breathe it in with full attention. And close your eyes and breathe. And in the mind's eye, reconstruct that abstract painting. Yellow, and black, and orange and a deeper orange. And hold that image. Breathing in, breathing out. Relaxing with each out breath, relaxing fully as the air leaves the body. And feeling the return of energy with the in breath. And when you're ready, come back to the painting. Allow your eye to search through the painting to determine other strong lines 
the lines that define the figures. Take your own time. Just wander through the painting with a special attention to the way line works to define figures. Define shapes. Allow the line, I'll allow the eye to follow lines at will, at your choice. You may find lines that define a circle, that define a full figure, that define the shape of an arm. shape of an ear. You may find lines that are distinct, lines that are blurred, and choose one area allow the eye to choose one area in the painting where line seems to function importantly. Take a snapshot of that one small area. And close your eyes. Turning to the breath. If you feel sleepy, remember to wake up. If the attention wanders, remind it to come back. In your mind's eye, reconfigure that area where you were following the lines. See if in the mind's eye you can reconstruct those lines and their relationship to each other. in as sharp a detail as you can manage. Now 
Breathing in, breathing out. Direct the breath, if you can, to the area around the eyes. Eyes still closed. They have been working hard. So use the breath to give them a nice relaxation. All those tiny muscles around the eyes. The eyelids. The surface of the eyes themselves. Resting in attention. And open your eyes and come back to the painting. This time, let's give our consideration to shapes. Let's take, for example, the shape of the figure in the foreground, the bluish figure, a very prominent shape in the painting. and allow yourself to see that shape in the context of the background we explored before. The yellow, the black, the orange, the deeper orange. See it, see the figure as a shape along with those other shapes. or consider the shape of the couple on the left side of the painting. How those two shapes interact. How they relate to the horizon and the rest of the painting. See them just as shapes. The shape of the figure stretching right at the center of the painting. Noticing how that figure cuts across the horizons.
sharpen your attention. Bring it to the white figure, the white female figure beside that central figure. Look at that figure just as a shape in relation to other shapes next door, adjacent to it. the shape of the figure reclining of the umbrella. The shape of the bearded man in the foreground. Try to see each of those image, images as a shape. Not concentrating on the detail, but simply on the shape in relation to the rest of the figures in the painting. Zoom back out, looking at the entire painting. And see it this time as a collection of shapes. Each of which relates to every other shape. And take note of that. Take a snapshot. Give it your full attention. And close your eyes. And breathe. And relax. and wake up. Feel the energy in the body, the energy of the breath, as it enlivens the entire body. If the image of the painting persists, allow it to dissipate now. So that you're looking at a blank screen as you breathe.
so that the next time you open your eyes, you come to the painting with fresh eyes. Exploring new details, new aspects of the painting. So when you're ready, open your eyes and look back at the painting. Let's dwell for a few moments on color. What is the color that first and foremost attracts your eye? What is the color that is most compelling? There's no right answer. There's only what your eye picks out. And dwell on that color for a while. And having chosen that color, ask yourself if it appears elsewhere in the painting, if it recurs. And in what part of the painting? And ask yourself too, if there are colors that are close, that seem to echo the color you've chosen. That seem to respond to it. Attracting your eye to different parts of the painting. And close your eyes and breathe and open them again and do the same with a different, perhaps a dramatically different color, one that contrasts with the color you've chosen. color that surprises. And follow that same process, looking for other areas of the painting where that same color reappears, or colors close to it, or colors that correspond to it.
and zoom out again. And gaze on the painting as a composition in color. Let your eye register how color functions, how it calls the eye. how it causes the eye to move through the painting. How it expresses feeling. What feeling it seems to express. And close your eyes. And come back to the breath. We have spent a good deal of time already with this painting. So just remind yourself how much we've missed, how many colors we failed to notice, how many lines weren't ignored, how many shapes are still to be explored. Try to reconstruct the whole painting as best you can in your mind's eye. What do you remember best? What do you remember only vaguely. Are there areas of the painting in the mind's eye where you can barely see what's happening at all? As with any good painting, there's always more to be seen. We have never fully exhausted it. So open your eyes once more, bring your attention back to the painting. And allow your eyes to pick out a total surprise. Something you had completely not noticed before. Some perhaps delightful corner of the painting you had missed. Even in this long time of looking at it. and just allow the eye to delight in that detail. Reminding yourself of how much more there is to be seen. Take one more last look at the painting as a whole. Try to take in the entire surface. 
as one organic whole. As though you were to take this painting home with you and have it on your wall. And close your eyes and come back to the breath. Reconstructing the painting. And allowing the whole image to dissipate. Returning to that tabula rasa, that clean slate. Where all that concerns you is the breath. Breath coming in. Breath going out. Resting in attention. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Well, that was one hour, one painting. Thank you, Marenta, for allowing me to do this. Uh, one, a couple of things I want to say about the painting. Um, it's by an artist by the name of James Strombotny. Um, it was painted in 1960, a moment at which uh, he achieved a very sudden prominence. His work became suddenly very popular. There was an article about him in Time magazine. And he was recognized as a major talent who had a great future. And uh, at a time when American art took the direction of being all about itself, becoming um, very self-reflective and or 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 in fact a, a little later than this uh, um, became very much involved in ideas the figure was kind of dismissed and painters artists who were painting the figure got kind of sidelined for a while unfortunately in my view and Jim, who I knew many years ago, I haven't seen him for many years, but he uh, is an extraordinary man. And he stuck with a figure. And he has always been a figure painting, painter. And has always had that uh, blend of a kind of lyrical view of human beings blended with a, kind, a sense of the grotesque a sense of the absurd, so that he not only, you, you have to laugh at his paintings a little bit. They're, they're wonderful paintings and seriously painted, and they tell us a lot about the human condition if we look at them and think about them. I think particularly with this painting, one of the interests, a couple of interesting things about this painting, for me, in this context, in the context of returning to one now one painting, it's called Laguna Beach, which seems appropriate. And I like the diversity. It's about the relationship between black people and white people in a way. There's that wonderful couple off to the left of the painting, uh, a black man and a, and a white woman. And it's so, so lovely to see that. So that was a part of my reason for, for uh, selecting this painting. 
So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you'll come back and see the painting. I hope that uh, the museum will hang it again one day for everyone to see. And uh, meantime, thank you for joining me. I've, I've really enjoyed working with this. So thank you, Marita. Thank you so much, Peter. And thank everyone for joining us.